Hello students, in the present module, we are going to discuss about teachers' pedagogical knowledge and teaching profession. Uh, see, teaching is a multi-talented field that needs at all times the acceptable identification of indicators of development in the society. The word teaching is mainly used for teaching learning process, where there is an interaction between teacher and the student. Teaching is considered effective only when there is a relative change in learner's behavior. Teaching profession originated with the development of education as a distinct field of vocation and profession. For a long time, it has been argued on the issue whether teaching is considered to be a distinct profession or not. Finally, the issue was resolved and it was decided that teaching is a distinct career and holds desired potentials that a profession or career must own. Further researchers have observed that for a career to be categorized as a distinct professional career, it is obligatory for that individual who is actually performing the vocation must have explicit skills and requisite knowledge. The present module highlights the teacher's pedagogical knowledge and teaching profession. In the present module, we'll try to examine what are the fundamentals of a profession. We'll try to examine teaching as a profession maybe as an evolving profession and we'll also try to develop an understanding of a professional teacher with reference to content, pedagogical and curricular knowledge with respect to specifically teacher competencies. When we try to envision who is a teacher, you know this has been conceptualized by National Knowledge Commission very clearly it says that enlightened emancipated and empowered teachers lead communities and nations in their march towards better and higher quality of life. They reveal and elaborate the secrets of higher values in life, nurture empathy for the fellow beings. They are torch bearers in the society in creating social cohesion, national integration, a learning society. They not only disseminate knowledge, but they also generate new knowledge. This is what has been conceptualized by National Knowledge Commission. When National Knowledge Commission says that there has to be empowered, emancipated and enlightened teachers, it has its own meaning. It says that teacher is not the one who is only transferring knowledge or facts. He is the one who is giving a perspective to life. And when I am saying perspective to life, that means that he is to make him competent in understanding certain knowledge or discipline one and after using that knowledge he is able to pursue that knowledge and use it in the practical way and try to earn his livelihood and out of that livelihood he takes care of his family and thereafter he also extends his concept of family and enters into the welfare of society and once he detached from his immediate family and extends himself to the further societal family his concept of detachment gets one with it and uh, this is how he gets into self-realization. Now this context of life has to be understood by every teacher and he is to make learners also understand about it. Further one more thing which he says in its uh, uh, document, he says that you know teachers not only disseminate knowledge, they also create new knowledge. So that onus is also on the teachers. Teaching profession is centered upon a specific field, basic teaching proficiencies and furthermore certain evident personality features that the profession demands. However, it has been found that there is a similar and familiar connection among the facts that individual that chooses teaching as profession possesses content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge and curricular knowledge. As far as knowledge is concerned, this interdisciplinary approach of education and content integration with other types of knowledge that is pedagogical, curricular and content. In addition to this, requisite skills and appropriate attitudes needs to be possessed by an effective teacher. As research has shown, teacher quality is a vital element in regulating gains in students achievement. Interpreters of teacher quality have usually incorporated aspects like size of class, qualification, certification, 
teaching experience or degrees earned additional less considered indicators of teacher quality is the pedagogical knowledge of teachers related with teaching profession i think which is the most required at present in this context when we have agreed that teaching is a profession then we must also try to understand what are the prerequisites of profession and what profession means professions are occupationally related social institutions so anything which can yield some livelihood is a profession so it is occupational related social institution established and maintained as a means of providing essential services to the individual and society no doubt about it that you know uh, teaching is one essential service which every individual and every society needs and there are certain prerequisites for being a profession one that profession is the one which has identifiable knowledge base that they have their clear cut knowledge base uh, no doubt you know most of the knowledge which has come in the teaching profession has been derived from principles of uh, psychology sociology and management but over the period of time there have been lot of researches which have established uh, it as uh, a identifiable knowledge base and in this context we are a developing profession second condition is autonomy in the exercise of professional judgment now autonomy in my view cannot be demanded it has to be owned and when i'm saying it has to be owned that means that you know i can be given freedom to take my professional judgment only and only when i'm competent so competence is one of the requisites if i want to get into autonomy in the exercise of my professional judgments third third prerequisite for being a profession is that the people who are working in that profession they have to serve about personal gain as primary motivation so instead of commitment to their own interest they are committed to the service of the client and here client word i am little reluctant to use because learner can never be a client and teachers teaching profession is such wherein we identify with the learner not only as a client but as our own own self is it it's considered to be extension of our own self fourth condition which is a prerequisite to profession is allegiance to a common code of conduct and ethics i think most of you would agree with me that ugc as well as ncte both they have defined in their regulations common code of conduct and ethics no doubt that we are not adhering it so strictly as very established professionals or professions they are adhering like medicine and law the assurance for a work related group to be designated as a specialized profession it is vital that it proposes services in a firm ground efforts throughout official preparation that delivers professional information grips professional ethnicity takes admission control occupies professional ethics possesses professional establishment and is taken as a profession by society one can differentiate the profession of teaching from numerous another careers by exceptionality plus superiority of the professional dealings among all educationists but nowadays the profession of teaching is confronting briskly fluctuating demands which command a novel set of skills or proficiencies teaching profession is grounded on a specialized plus definite field teaching skills and certain basic personal qualities that a profession obliges thus it can be said that there is an intimate relation between the fact that individuals who opt for this job must own mastery over subject matter basic teaching skills and suitable personality traits these three things are very important according to adern 2007 teaching profession can be stated as professional occupational group of education sector possessing social cultural economical scientific and technological dimension to be regarded as professional teacher has to be one he has to be highly competent will define competence also in coming uh, time but one condition is that he has to be highly competent second he needs to be committed to the delivery of quality service he needs to seek autonomy for decision making in the discharge of their professional duties in teaching mastery of subject matter 
and effective communication skills are critical components of competence. The chief responsibility of this kind of profession is to impart proper guidance to children, adolescents and those who are in adulthood in the quest of knowledge and talents to nurture them in the way equality and to assist them in the ways of democracy and to support them to be joyful, valuable and self-sustaining residents. Teachers have a huge responsibility for possessing and refining the expertise and proficiencies of the profession. In the present scenario, a teacher or an educationist should possess basic abilities such as expertise on the subject matter, motivating for learning. This is missing and teacher has to, be, has to act as a motivator for inducing learning. Awareness of student differences. As a teacher, I need to know every student is different. Planning the teaching process. Probably we just read and prepare our lesson rather than, you know, planning the teaching process in the context of what are our learning objectives and out of learning objectives, I try to select the content and then I design my strategies of teaching. Now this process a teacher has to do and he has to, you know, formulate different kind of uh, uh, different kind of ideas, sequence them and fix up the strategies and make an overall strategy of teaching. In addition to that, he is to know and use teaching learning strategies, design learning environment, he is to make effective communication and at last and the most important objective evaluation. Teachers who have complete mastery of their content allow their learners to energetically partake in the classroom discussions or activities. Thus, in this manner, teachers are able to pay attention to those learners who face problems while learning and are prepared for any kind of question asked by the students. It demands a teacher training period for a person to be specialized in a specific pedagogy that builds up a ground for having a pedagogical knowledge by a teacher will elaborate in the coming uh, you know, slot, will try to elaborate what pedagogical knowledge is and what are the different dimensions of pedagogical knowledge and how that pedagogical knowledge helps us to be a professional. Friends, when I'm saying pedagogical knowledge, I'm talking of the knowledge based on pedagogy which signifies the specialized knowledge of teachers for designing effective teaching learning environment for all learners. Now, all learners is very difficult and a challenge in the front of a teacher because uh, every learner has their own needs and that's why we try to follow differentiated instruction. Uh, it can be expected from teachers to practice and assess innovative information pertinent to their basic teaching practice and to modernize their knowledge in order to meet new teaching demands or requirements. Teacher quality is a significant aspect in regulating improvements in the academic achievement of learners. The key purpose for examining the knowledge of teachers is to enhance the academic performance of the learners. On the contrary, to enhance teacher quality, it is important to comprehend what teacher professionalism actually engages. Thus, the foremost factor motivating the study of teacher knowledge are refining student outcomes in the form of better academic achievement and a better teacher professionalism. Researchers emphasize many aspects that characterize expert teachers or instructors which incorporate wide pedagogical content knowledge, enhance problem solving abilities, healthier adjustment for each and every learner, superior decision making, improved observation of classroom scenarios and greater regard for learners. Now in pedagogical knowledge, we have pedagogical knowledge base which involves requisite cognitive knowledge for designing effective teaching learning strategies. A teacher need to know how the mind works, how the left domain of the mind works and how the right domain of uh, you know, mind works and how the teacher engages the students with different activities and how that is going to help the mind to organize the content uh, for better and effective learning. Recognizing the matter of this type of knowledge base is a critical concern. Most of the findings 
use the distinction between declarative meaning thereby knowing that and procedural knowledge that is knowing how so we know few things but how that thing has evolved as a knowledge needs to be learned from cognitive psychology as a theoretical basis this kind of methodology is applicable as it spotlights on understanding how knowledge is connected to conduct or in other words the eminence of teaching performance uh, students for the convenience of understanding i am trying to put before you a model of competence which which says that you know there has to be three types of knowledge one is content knowledge when i'm saying content knowledge meaning thereby as a teacher of geography for example i am teaching geography so i must know the accepted truths of the discipline like what are the facts theories principles of geography that i need to know as a teacher and second thing which is very important uh, and which sometimes lacks which gives some kind of reflection to our pedagogy also that if i am teaching some concept to a child that child must know why this concept is worth knowing and i'll be able to infuse this understanding to the child only when as a teacher i know the concept which i am teaching why this is worth knowing for me as well as for the learner uh in addition to this i need to know the interlinkages between different concepts and facts within my discipline that's that helps me to link my subject with other related uh you know other related subjects to make a comprehensive understanding of the basic purpose of teaching that is understanding reality around us third thing under content knowledge which as a teacher i think we must know for be becoming a effective teacher that you know as a teacher of geography i must know what is central to geography and what is peripheral to my discipline or geography so when i'm saying what is central to geography i say the space relationship what exists where if i'm talking about mountains then which mountain is where is a concern of uh, geography if i'm saying crops then which crop is grown where and how much that is the concern of geography rest all things are peripheral to my discipline they could be central to some other discipline so as a teacher of a particular subject i need to know what is central to my discipline and what is on the periphery to my discipline second aspect uh, under the structure of model of competence of a teacher in addition to content knowledge is pedagogical content knowledge in pedagogical knowledge content knowledge one thing which i firmly believe that most of the time teacher is not effective if he tries to say that if the student is not learning effectively it is not because of me because the student is not capable to learn it means i doubt that the learner can be educated or not now one belief what i feel which is very important for a teacher to be effective that he believe that every each and every learner is educable once i have this feeling or this attitude i try to address to individual needs of the learner this is one thing we know which is very important from pedagogical point of view second thing is focus on outcomes uh many a times teacher plans his uh, lecture goes to the class and delivers it and he consider his responsibility is over no until unless uh, the teacher focuses on outcomes like what i teach is altogether a different thing i have to focus on what student learned uh so that focus unless uh, teacher has that focus on the outcomes he'll not be able to engage students effectively in the classroom third thing taking responsibilities for the students if the student is not performing well i as a teacher should take the responsibility and firmly believe once i take the responsibility i make an effort it's same you know when my child my own son at home doesn't study well i try to take responsibility and try to find out different ways wherein i can engage him into studies so in classroom also i should be able to take the responsibility for my students learning and lastly which is very important that is attention to consistency throughout institute or community it is not in the hands of the teacher but the whole teaching community including the administrators they should try to develop a learning 
environment within the classroom and outside the classroom if that happens probably we have better uh, you know better better ways to make learning effective two things more which are important from pedagogical content knowledge is as a teacher i must know how a student learn which are the different theories of learning which are the different tools uh, which can be employed or teaching techniques which can be employed for making learning effective which are the different ICT tools which can make my learning effective and lastly under uh, pedagogical content knowledge that is process of teaching see as a teacher I must know that you know teaching is not just reading something and delivering in the classroom I have to understand one thing that you know uh, uh, there is there are different structures uh, you know uh, of structures of uh, content how do we sequence how do we sequence the content when we read from the classroom or classroom textbooks you know that content is organized in a logical way but the way student learns is not logical it has to be psychological and you know as a teacher I must know how should I hook the attention of the learner how should I organize teaching activities uh, so that you know learner is all the time motivated and feeling interested into what's happening in the classroom he feels more one with the teacher rather than isolated mentally with the teacher until this the student is mentally linked up with the teacher probably he'll not be able to effectively learn last thing students in the model of competence for teachers the third type of knowledge is curricular knowledge now curricular knowledge talks about two types of knowledge one is lateral knowledge and second is horizontal knowledge when I'm talking of lateral knowledge that means what as a teacher of geography what I studied last year and what I'm studying today and what I'll be studying next year all these three things if are linked in the mind of the teacher probably he is able to justify the content in a better way so that is one aspect that you know as a teacher I should not concentrate only on the present curriculum but try to link with previous curriculum and forthcoming curriculum also and second is horizontal knowledge uh, that is you know nowadays in higher education we are a lot a lot many times we are talking about interdisciplinary approach meaning thereby the basic purpose of uh, teaching is not uh, you know only transferring knowledge but to understand the reality and that reality could be physical reality also and social reality also when I'm studying sciences so I'm trying to understand the physical reality around me and when I'm trying when I'm understanding social sciences or learning social sciences I'm trying to understand the social reality around me so as a subject like if I am a teacher of geography I need to link it with history also political science also economics also if I'm able to do that probably I'll be able to teach effectively so as a teacher if I have content knowledge if I have pedagogical content knowledge and if I've got curricular knowledge probably I'll be more competent to teach my students and students would benefit better from my teaching uh, students the same uh, type of division of teacher knowledge has been classified by Shulman in 1987 which talks about different types of uh, knowledge and you know he categorized them into seven categories he also talked about general pedagogical knowledge pedagogical content knowledge the same has been presented on the slide also uh, this slide is basically the correspondence between the domain of content knowledge for teaching and Shulman initial categories that is subject matter knowledge and pedagogical content knowledge in subject matter knowledge he talks about common content knowledge and specialized content knowledge whereas in pedagogical content knowledge he talks about knowledge of content and students knowledge of content and teaching along with that he talks about knowledge of curriculum also I'll not elaborate this uh, because you know this has already been discussed in my previous task after reviewing uh, the model of competence uh, uh, for a teacher wherein we talked about basically uh, the content knowledge pedagogical knowledge and curricular knowledge now I'll try to just touch upon some of the aspect of uh, competencies which a teacher needs to develop in addition to the knowledge we acquire so there are numerous essential competencies for anyone who wants to teach in OECD teacher knowledge survey these competencies were categorized into three domains one instructional process second learning process 
and assessment. First domain that is instructional process is related with conveying or imparting information. Second domain learning process is the part where learning really occurs and assessment is concerned with measurement of results of learning course. It is wise to sustain these three domains distinct from each other since they link to various phases of teaching learning process. One is related to planning, second is for implementation and third is for evaluation. It is very much important to keep in mind that the above first two mentioned domains are two separate terms. Instruction means giving information and learning is about attaining it and explaining it so that the information becomes learner's subjective knowledge and that is different from different for each learner. The actual learning often occurs after learning has been done and the freshly acquired knowledge is employed in day-to-day -day life situation and united with prevailing knowledge and experience of the learner. Many times uh, we say, we, we call it deep learning also, people say, you know, whatsoever you have learned, basically you can tell that, you know, once you spent 10 years after your actual teaching learning process in the classroom. So what you retain that time is actually your deep learning. When learning is predominantly perceived to be an effect, deep learning, that is a reconstructed personal understanding of the topic. When learning is predominantly perceived to be an effect, examination, maybe quiz, maybe project, the importance lies on the instruction and standardized measurements of learning. While teacher knowledge is definitely a constituent of teacher professionalism, professional competence includes more than just knowledge. Skills, attitudes and motivational variables also contribute to mastery of teaching and learning. Effective use of teacher's pedagogical knowledge involves preparation of instruction to support the information delivery. Whether it's flipped learning or say direct instruction or some other form of exposing students to the content. Second, building of supportive and secure learning environment where students can focus on the acquisition of new knowledge, improved assessment procedures to assess students' individual learning processes. This certainly is not a one-size-fit approach for education or training, but much more effective learning experience for both teachers and students. The most important dimension of competence for teachers is ability to integrate and synthesize, ability to integrate sound scholarship with excellence in teaching, to integrate theory with practice, and ability to integrate research with teaching. As uh, a teacher of education, I like to suggest one and all, if you want to become a professional teacher, you know, you have to analyze and develop a high degree of competence which requires strong commitment to personal growth and sustained hard work. If two things are there, you are not working for institution, you are not working for society. First, you are working for your own growth. If you are committed to your personal growth and sustained hard work, you are moving towards professionalism. It begins with self-analysis, identification of one's strengths, weaknesses, interests and aptitudes. And once you do that analysis, you have to decide about the areas in which you as teacher wants to excel, maybe classroom teaching, maybe conduct of research, maybe writing of uh, publications, maybe management skills, maybe consulting, maybe development and use of technology. So in which area you want to develop is your wish. So you have to identify that. Once the areas of professional development are identified and prioritized, appropriate learning experiences can be identified. Pursued for more competent performance. Since teachers are responsible for acculturating students into different professions, they need to serve as role models in terms of competence and commitment to teaching. Thank you so much.